Um, so, uh, welcome everybody who's tuned in uh, for the talk. As we saw last week, uh, we were looking at angulation. Uh, we were looking at um, making angles in the body, and a bit like how these talks have gone so far, we're just trying to get across to people uh, the, the message that there is, there is quite a lot you can do if you replicate the movements that you make or you try to make on the mountain. Last week we um, we got a lot of feedback actually from people that were doing the, if you remember we were looking at angulation or trying to make angles in the body, uh, left and right. Uh, everybody that actually did call us, called us for a reason, so it was because they were definitely feeling an imbalance between left and right, or a lock up somewhere physically. So we had, we had a lot of discussions actually, um, right the way up until yesterday evening. Um, I had a good discussion, I want to thank uh, George Page who, who rang us from the States and, and he gave us ex-ski instructor and, and now works in, in television that he was talking about his, uh, his story, what he works on with his skiing and we had a really interesting conversation, points of which I'm going to bring up in today's chat. I um, want to also thank everyone again who's been getting involved and guys like uh, Griffin Snow Sports Centre that have been sharing these posts and passing it on to their, their guys. The guys are our partners at MDV, um, Mark and Doug Bellow Vocal. Um, and anyone else that's obviously got involved so far, um, last week's, you know, obviously we kicked off last week by talking you guys through some of the things you can do at home uh, with the stretches on week threes. Uh, results from that have been really good. You know, once again, people have carried on working on the, the range of steering from week three, which was great. Last week's session, a couple of things that we saw from people working at home was just a general um, better feel for that axis. So we were just talking not so much about fore and aft, we were literally just mentioning leg lean, lateral leg lean um, across. And it was obviously something that people were, were using at home. And, and the big thing that we found was people were finding a difference between left and right. Uh, so that, that's actually, you know, that, that's just straight away something that you can help rectify at home. Um, the other thing we found was that people were starting to do some dynamic exercises, they were starting to fall against the wall. We were mentioning the idea of putting a pillow down the side of your hip and making repetition with that. And then the identification of the weaker turn, a lot of people that we spoke to on the phone actually went back uh, and it kind of provoked them to go back and look at video footage. Uh, and what was really good on the video footage, they could see when they went in slow motion because it was explained a little bit um, off of snow and, 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 and you know, sparked awareness. Uh, that they were seeing things in the skin that they hadn't seen before. So that's the other thing I think to use these sessions for, is to go back and perhaps dig out some video uh, footage of yourself skiing and see if you can look a little bit closer because sometimes, uh, like anything, when you're looking at something without the prior knowledge, it can all look like a bit of a blur, like one sort of movement and you can't break things apart and see those specific moments in the turn that you might be needing to focus on. Um, so from that perspective, it's, uh, it, it, it's worked very useful for people to use that video footage. Uh, and the same, you know, don't, don't be shy to send the footage in still. Um, we're still looking at it, we're still going over it and, and helping people with the analysis on that as well. Um, like we said in previous weeks, uh, Rob and Jordan from our team are, um, are in the background here doing some work, messaging people, looking at what's, uh, what's being written as we, as we talk. Um, so, so to keep those questions coming in as the talk's going on, um, and hopefully we can get some answers. And as you know, th this video clip, it stays um, on our Facebook page. So although it's live right now, um, as soon as it's uh, finished, it gets uploaded in, in a higher resolution, and you guys will have a chance to, to go over any questions and things like that. But we'll get some of the questions answered actually during this talk. I've got my phone there, so if Rob sees anything worth bringing up during the talk, or Jordan does, um, it will flash up on the phone and we'll, we'll bring it into the conversation as well. Um, hope you guys have had a good week. Obviously, it's another week on lockdown. Um, here in Verbier, the weather uh, is changed. We had six weeks of incredible weather, incredible sunshine, and now we've had a lot of uh, uh, rain on the, in the lower areas and definitely looking at the mountains yesterday when we got a glimpse of the sun, they look absolutely beautiful and, and very, very white again. So there's definitely a lot of snow up on the top areas. So, so just to go over this week's subject, um, we said last week that as an addition in terms of, 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 of making angles and leaning, we are talk about leg extension and leg flexion, which are really important points in, in terms of developing dynamics in your skin. 
but also, you know, we're going to try and talk about it at a few different stages in someone's skiing because um, one of the areas where we talk about trying to get the, the, the outside leg to extend and put pressure on the ski, um, this can go right back to your early stages in skiing. As soon as you even get the feeling um, for, for turning and making, you know, steering your feet across the hill and you feel the difference between left and right on that. So uh, we're going to look at that and, and, and make some examples. We've got the video screen set up here. I'll bring the camera closer when we do use this. And on the video screen, we're just going to show you a couple of things. Um, there's actually a video uh, being shot here um, from our, our very close friends at Hemel, at the, the, the Hemel Snow Centre. Um, we do a lot of the filming. We actually shot one of the, the how-tos uh, on a power plow. And the power plow exercise, Rob will post it on the chat so you guys can use the video. Um, but the power plow exercise, it is up on a YouTube channel. It was all, most of it was all shot at Hemel. And it sort of goes to show um, that when you're using these, these, uh, these training grounds, these indoor snow domes, if you've got an agenda, and you know, like the, the, the ski school and all the instructors at Hemel, they're the, they're the kind of team, and you know, same for many other of these venues, they're the kind of team that will give you great exercises to work on. Um, we shot most of this at Hemel, and you know, you can get a lot done. One of the things that was interesting, just from my own personal experience, I remember we got up really early. Um, Pete, my friend at Hemel, was very, very kind, and, and Ian, they, they, they opened up the slope about 6 a.m. for us. We went to the slope, and I, I remember thinking, right, I'm going to try and do some exercises, get my legs pumping and my legs working. And straight away, just as an exercise, I remember feeling that when I was making my leg extension, it felt really good, my leg extension as I was going to the right. And in the morning, when I was leg extending on my, my right leg, one, I could feel my knee twinge, which is like, okay, I'm aware of that now. Uh, hadn't skied for about two months. Um, and, and two, it just didn't feel like it was, was firing up the same. It was almost like, was it something to do with strength or was it something to do with my brain not connecting with my right leg? Or was there some inhibition, uh, something that was just restricting me doing it because I did have a, a knee injury that I was carrying? So there are a couple of things to think about, but that this is the video we're gonna go through with you. We've got a little video clip to show you of um, a couple of skiers going down and where you can clearly see that they're, they're, they're trying to make that parallel turn into their new direction. And the video angle that we filmed them at across the slope, you'll see that when the pressure wasn't put on the ski and actually the mimicking of this, this thing we're gonna talk about, you know, leg extension down into the snow. Um, a lot of the time when people don't have that feeling or sensation, uh, the foot can just slip out to the side. And, and you can lose that grip and that, that, that connection at the start of the turn. So we're gonna show that as well. And then we'll show a little bit of parallel skiing, um, some carving of turns we were just making in Trevino. And, and, and you'll, we'll talk you through frame by frame of roughly where the pressure is getting put against the ski. So, so today's session is talking about leg extension. And just to sort of, you know, to show you, leg extension is literally, it, it, it's that. It's pushing across and extending the outside leg of the turn. What's really important, and which another area we're going to focus on, is um, leg flexion. Because a lot of the time, uh, people can actually get the, the method of leg extension, again, pressure against the outside ski. Um, and I, I'm going to use a word like the downhill ski, because some people viewing, who have probably had a little bit less experience, may have heard it be called the downhill ski. And it's the ski, obviously, that carries a lot of the pressure in the turn. The, you know, the technical term for that outside, it, that, that downhill leg is called the outside leg, because for half of the turn, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's up the hill, you know, it's, it's above you. So, so it's something that we want to try to, to bring in. But if you're actually quite good at leg extension, sometimes skiers can get blocked by not doing the opposite. And the opposite, you can kind of imagine this in a cycling uh, sense, that you know, when you, you leg extend down, what really has to happen is the inside leg needs uh, to release and flex up to allow that hip to move across, forwards and across into the turn. And that's just something that we're also going to cover today because we can put you into some work at home exercises um, to get those legs really working in sync. Um, so just to, uh, just to go over it, you know, leg extension, we, we see it as a very important aspect in skiing. We know that you need to use it. Um, one of the things it does do when you leg extend, um, you put pressure on a ski. So I'm just going to use a, a pair of these skis, vocal uh, detent. This ski is um, a ski next season that comes out, so it's, uh, it's a carbon version um, of a Deacon. But when you put pressure on a ski, 
especially on the earlier phases of the turn. Um, what you do is you bend a ski into a, into a thing called reverse camber. A lot of the skis have um, rockers on them these days, but the, the general part is that the middle area of the ski from where my, my fingers are, that will have a camber in it, like a, a, a curve. And when you press onto that curve, um, you push the ski into a, a reverse camber shape, and the ski will pick up on the turn, and it'll actually make a, a slightly nicer arc shape for you. A lot of skiers, you can call it sort of park and ride, where they don't put pressure on the ski, and they, they tilt the ski onto its edge, but they only get the turn radius of what the ski edge is set, is set at. So, for example, if this is a, a 14 or 15, if I actually look at it, what is it? Yeah, it's a 15 radius, 50 meter radius ski. If you put pressure on a ski at the start of the turn, you can turn that 50 meter radius into something like a seven, eight or nine meter, and you can really dictate the turn shape. So that's one of the big things about putting pressure on the ski. It puts you in charge of the turn. Um, so from that perspective, we want to sort of get that point across earlier on in the talk that putting pressure on a ski bends the ski into reverse camber um, and helps the skier uh, get grip, which is one of the big things when you push pressure onto that edge, you're pushing the ski into the snow, not letting it drift sideways, but you're pushing it downwards into the snow. Um, and that ski bend shape, you know, makes such a difference in the turn. The other thing to think about, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have felt this at home, um, when you make a turn, you sometimes get that feeling that there isn't much happening at the start of the turn, but as you go through the turn and towards the end of the turn, you can end up with an overload of pressure. It's almost like a juddering and, and, and your ski didn't quite sort of hold the edge at the end of the turn and it, it slipped sideways. It felt like it sort of, well, sometimes the explosion is the wrong word, but it kind of, it couldn't hold or handle the pressure and it got spat out at the end of the turn, started skidding. And, and there's something to think about with pressure and, and leg extension. If you can get that pressure put onto the ski on the earlier, start, the earlier part of the turn, um, you have a much more even sort of play with the pressure as you go through the turn. Um, if you don't get the pressure on up at the start of the turn, you can end up getting an overload. And you can imagine it like this. If you have a semicircle, and let's say we break the semicircle into like five chunks of 20%, okay? So there's five chunks of 20% as you go around the semicircle. If you didn't press on that, that, that pressure, and you've got to try and use up that whole 100% of the pressure, as you come around the arc, and you only pressed on the ski at the, the, the halfway stage of the turn, you have to imagine that all that pressure has somehow got to be handled as you go through. And that, that's something that's, that's just worth bearing in mind. It's much better to distribute that pressure more evenly throughout the turn. So we're going to, um, we're going to look at the leg extension uh, process. One of the big things about leg extension is that um, we want to try and get across the point that leg extension um, is, quite, is quite basic when you think about it from an up and down point of view of the axis. But the thing about skiing and the, the point we want to get across today is the leg extension we want you guys to be thinking about is at angles. It's not just with your hip on top of your feet. We want to get a lot of rehearsal done at home of leg extension with your legs out at an angle. And, and that's the thing that will happen and it's going to be more mimicked to how you ski. Um, I'll bring the camera a little bit closer just so you can see the screen here, guys. I don't know, we had a few um, issues with the audio. Some people saying it wasn't loud enough. So I'm, going to, I'm just making a slight effort to try and speak up a little bit louder for you today. And hopefully... Uh, that does make a difference. So the TV screen um, just there will give you a, a sort of a rough picture. Um, let's have a quick uh, look here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the video uh, going through. And we just spoke that this was filmed at Hemel at the indoor snowdo um, a few years back. And the exercise uh, on the video is, is basically just a, a very basic exercise. You can see here on the screen... Um, there's a definite outside leg extension here. And this, this was just a snowplow that was being used to try and sharpen up or raise awareness of the, of the legs and the need to try and get some leg extension working. Um, one of the reasons we're, we're talking about this as a subject is because after watching many, many people come on to ski courses, we quite often see that there is a lack, you know, a general lack of movement in the leg extension when skiers ski. They, they, they tend to be a bit more static in the legs. And the way we develop skis is obviously to make them aware of it, and usually that's with video analysis. But 
you can tell a skier that looks quite static in the legs. And, and I'm sure you guys have seen skiers that flow and make great angles, or skiers that just look a little bit apprehensive is probably one of the words to use. And also maybe slightly fearful, you know, that, there's, there's no two ways about it, that people get sort of static and, and refrain from making leg movements that they might naturally use off of snow um, because of that aspect that you're standing on a hill, a slippery surface, and it's not everyone's cup of tea sometimes. So, uh, we, you know, this is the thing that sometimes if someone comes out on a ski course, for example, and we're kicking off on a Sunday morning and, and, and we can see, you know, we're skiing down to our usual area, we'll do a warm-up routine. Um, not everyone is in the same amount of control, and quite often some people actually can carry a little bit of fear, uh, and it's usually people that don't have these legs working and pumping, that they're static, um, so they don't push the ski into the snow and generate that pressure. Um, so that, this here is just a, a, like a little visual on the outside leg and the outside leg putting grip in. So we use this exercise, and as I said earlier, I, I felt a little bit static when I did this. So this is why leg extension work, when you do get a chance to put your skis on, or when you're at home and you're rehearsing it, leg extension work is great um, for waking things up. Quite often, you can work on leg extension exercises like power plow, go back to your skiing, and without actually working on something within your skiing, feel like, wow, something feels different in, in your actual skiing technique. And we found that a lot. Um, so watching the turns be made here, you can see that the turns coming through, a couple of little dots here to show on, on the difference where each knee is. So right leg, leg extension, the inside leg needs to flex, leg flexion, okay? Coming through further, you'll see a couple of more turns as we come down the slope. So leg extension there, paused again, and there's a very big difference between the left and right leg. Um, I mean, not too dissimilar, obviously, this is a plow, so the feet are out at different angles, but not too dissimilar from what you see when you see people cycling. Um, quite often, you know, when we're cycling, or we're, we're cycling around the mountains here, going around a corner bend, um, you, can, you can almost feel that same feeling when you've got your outside leg down against the pedal, trying to secure that part of the bike, keeping it gripping. Um, you certainly wouldn't put your inside pedal down when you go around a corner here, because you've got a strong chance of the bike slipping away. Very, very similar thing in skiing. Um, so we'll just watch the rest of these turns come through. And there you can see the leg working, pumping and pressing through. And you can see the exercise as it gets more active here, not pausing it, but just showing how the knees can have such a difference in the turns when you're coming through. So that's, that's a big thing from our point of view. I'm just gonna take the video forwards and just show you um, a couple of people skiing. And this lady here, as she comes through, this is just up on um, a couple of years back now uh, in Trevinia. And someone going through a turn, what well, looks like a, you know, a, a good intermediate parallel skier, but watch what happens when the turn towards the left now is about to be made, and the skier comes through. And what you'll see, um, there isn't a lot of grip going on, there's not a lot of carve, but as she goes to change direction, what we would wanna see is that right leg now start to activate. Uh, quite early in the turn, you imagine drawing the semicircle, you're in the first sort of third, first phase of the turn. And as she comes through, watching what should happen with that right leg, where it should extend down and into the snow, um, because the movement um, in her skiing um, isn't practiced, you can see that as she goes through it here, the leg comes out at an angle. Uh, and it's not a direct downwards movement, it's a slight pushing out movement. Um, matched up with that, the inside leg isn't reacting. So the inside leg is staying quite static as she comes through the turn. Um, just watching it there. She makes parallel in the end, but at that very important phase of the turn, uh, and you, you all might sort of be trying to think back to your skiing. Quite often it is that initiation when you're changing from one direction to the next, but that's the sort of part of the turn. It can be the same in powder, you know, when you're going through sort of halfway through, three quarters through, you, you kind of know what's going on by that stage. But the part for a lot of people that can be unpredictable is that initiation phase. And the initiation can feel unpredictable because these legs aren't working at that timing moment of when we want to try and get that new engagement with the new outside ski. And, and that's a, a very, very common thing. And this is why we wanted to bring it up as a subject of something to work on at home. Um, so that was just an example of one skier. We've got another one coming down here. Um, 
you know, parallel turn being made just there to the right. Um, starts with a little bit wide, you know, but nothing, nothing too bad with that. Got the skis onto quite a nice angle. Comes through to the next turn, and you'll see again the ski being slipped out. So going back for a few frames here, you can see what happens to the right ski. Ideally, what you want to see in that position is some pressure being put through the base of that right foot, coming through the turn, but the, 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 the inbuilt thing, and, and she didn't do this in both turn directions actually, because her turn towards the right was a strong one, but the turn where she lacked that confidence or lacked that, that movement pattern was on this turn. And you can clearly see the ski being pushed out to the side. And what happens there, obviously the body weight goes back. The other thing when you're not using these legs like pistons and getting them working for you, you can quite often see skiers losing the ability to push that ski into the snow and create friction. And it's the friction that stops you get that feeling, you know, that you're going back seat. Um, so that, that was just something that we thought it would be good to show you guys because it's a very common thing that we see with many skiers. Um, so from the point of view of, um, of watching those guys go down, you, you, you can see that not always do people get the legs working. Um, I'm going to show you just here a couple of calf turns. So calf turns being made, coming through, and what you'll see here is the outside leg got an extension, the inside leg is flexed, helps stay in balance, and there again. So from these angles, um, here you can just see what the right leg's doing. So back up in the turn, um, the right leg sort of started to get active and get engaged just about here, you know, believe it or not. It was quite early, and in that stage there, it, it helped get the skis engaged, it helped get the hip moving forwards and down the fall line into the new turn. And you can see the pressure has been built up on the ski. And that right ski gains good pressure here. And as it comes through the turn, just on this point here, as it passes through the fall line, let's have a look at the ski's angle. Just there. And on that, you can actually see, I'll bring the camera a tiny bit closer. Um, but you can actually see here, that if you look at the ski itself, um, that's that pressure thing we were talking about earlier. The ski uh, gets pushed, got good, good pressure early in the turn and the ski gets bent into reverse camber. And it's that reverse camber that we were saying um, that actually helps you dictate your turn radius. You know, the ski's got a certain radius, but then you as the sort of uh, the driver, you've got so much more ability um, to be able to play around with that pressure and, and push it into the, uh, the ski into the ground and create different types of turn shapes. And, and it's so essential because, you know, skiing is not fabricated in any sort of set pattern. You know, one single ski run, just skiing from one lift to another, could involve all sorts of things that you need to change your turn shape, sometimes rapidly, uh, but sometimes just to keep into a nice sink, you know, ski in a radius with other people that you're skiing with. Um, so that, there's just a few things that are worth bearing in mind from that. So that's showing you the, the difference between a left hand and a right hand turn and what you can get with, um, with the reverse camber. So um, I'm going to put the camera back up on its previous place. The, um, there we go. Okay, so we're back there again. Good. So just in terms of... Um, what we're looking at that on the pictures, one of the things that we, we see people needing to do um, and, and exercises that, that people have you know, worked on and tried at home, um, that there is a, there's, quite a, there's a good exercise. So, you, so one way of working it is getting a, um, a TheraBand, um, a, a strong TheraBand, and getting yourself into a situation where you've got um, a bit of support. So if you were to tie your TheraBand, we talked about this briefly last week, but if you were to tie some TheraBand, around a banister or something that's strong or railing. And around your waist, you can actually get some support where the TheraBand could be over this side and you're pushing away and getting leg extension with your outside leg. The resistance there is over this side, trying to pull you away, but you imagine a band that is there and something that you've got to, to push against. So a flex leg to an extended leg is quite a different thing. Now, as you're working through that, um, you also need to imagine that what you don't want to do is get an extension that's got a very stiff inside leg. We said earlier that a lot of people 
carry tension in the inside leg. Every time you make that movement, every time you go to make a, an extension across, whether it's doing it with a TheraBand locked on on one side, Rob, myself, um, will post a video onto this chat so you can see that. But if you, if you Google it, there are a few videos out there on YouTube. But really basic, I mean, it's not, not rocket science. You just tie a band around a, a baluster that's secure around your waist, and you've got something that you can play around with where you can sort of pull, pull against that pressure of the TheraBand. Um, when you're doing it, make every movement progressive. You know, it's not something that you, like a bull in a china shop, um, force your leg against. But as you're making the movement, we want to try and stress that this inside leg has got to be used to sort of flexing up. That's what we want you to do when you're skiing. Um, you're obviously doing it on a hill, so it's, it's a different thing to obviously simulate at home. But just simple movements working left and right. So your other direction on this side, um, this is the side where I, I can tell it's not the same natural movement. But the idea that you make greater and greater angles of leg extension at an angle is the key to this and the key to the work at home exercise. So, you know, from an education point of view, one of the things we'd suggest and sort of really encourage you guys to do this week is to look at some video of yourself skiing when you're getting a view where you're coming ideally straight at the camera or being caught in between your turns. Um, look at your legs and see if you can see a direct change in pressure. Um, so, so there's quite a lot of different aspects that you can do. The other thing you know, to think about, just real simple sort of basics of, of just landing on, on one leg, pushing off of one side, and trying to get yourself working at dynamic angles across the room. The, the, the difference with this is, is that everyone needs to think about a very basic starting level. And as you progress through it, you may find that something where you're jumping across the room one meter, after like 20, meet, uh, 20 minutes or, or whatever, working on it over a couple of days, you could be getting two, two meters across the, the, uh, the room and be developing in that moment of developing distance a much stronger lateral movement and a movement that would match up to things you may need to do when you're trying to work your skiing. It's not going to be identical. Um, things that are more specific like mimicking the range of steering is very, very specific to your skiing and exactly the sort of range that you'll be using. But just a simple movement of leg extension will get you firing up the muscles, but rehearsing it at a lateral angle, an angle of lean like this. That's, that's what we want to try and you know, drill home with people. Um, the, the idea from what we said at the start of the talk about sending the video into us, um, it's a very realistic thing to do because we've made quite big pros, um, progress with people in terms of raising awareness so far this, this, these sessions over the last five weeks. Um, and some people have got huge results that so when they do finally get to, to clip their skis back on, whether it be at an indoor snow dome or whether it be, you know, possibly, God knows, skiing at the, the end of this summer or, or over the months this summer, who knows what, uh, what, what we've got in store for us. Obviously, it changes almost daily. But rehearsing it, activating it, as I said at the start of this talk, when I went to film those power plow exercises, um, I, I immediately found one leg wasn't firing up like the other. So I'm pretty sure um, that a lot of people watching this um, will have that opportunity to, to, to define what leg does and what leg doesn't fire up. Um, and, I, and, it, and it's so essential, but there's nothing better than using this lockdown time to go and identify these things so that when you do get to ski, and as I said to you, whether it's this summer or whether it's in the autumn or the start of next season, um, get, it, get it fixed now, get, get some increased range of movement, build up some muscle strength, create some awareness now, um, so that when you do go and clip your skis on, uh, there's, there's a big change, there's a significant change. Um, so in terms of uh, what questions we've got, we'll carry on this session after uh, today, so obviously we'll be online, um, myself, Jordan and Rob will be answering questions as the day goes on, keep them coming in like you did last week. Um, next week's session is to do with um, core uh, strength, core activation, and sort of core endurance. Um, and the reason I say that is that we, we often talk about this idea of, uh, yeah, everyone can get down on the floor and do planks for a couple of minutes or whatever and be a, a planks uh, champion for holding that one static position. But we want to try and talk a little bit next week about um, core activation but having the ability to hold your core stability 
whilst your body is doing other things and making other movement patterns. Um, and we make this interesting uh, point that when we do our talks, um, um, uh, you know, around the UK and when we're, we're, we're delivering these lectures, at the end of the lecture, we sometimes mention that, you know, a challenge would be for someone to get in their car um, and, and try and think about their core activation. So if they're sitting in their car like so and they, they activate the core and, you know, you can, you can actually feel if you guys read up on it and, and look at how you activate your core, you'll, you'll almost feel your, your upper body raising a few millimetres uh, once you've activated it and creating that strength around the, the middle of the body. But activating it and trying to keep it activated over duration of time, and let's just say you ski for 30 seconds or one minute, you know, keeping it activated for the whole of that ski run is so different to the activation and the basics of activation where you're lying on the floor, nothing else to think about, and you're making your, your, your planks work for you there. When you're skiing and you've got all these other movements and your body's moving and flowing and and your legs are extending and flexing and your legs are steering and your ankles flexing and all sorts of things going on, sometimes your mind can get taken off of your core. And, and this is the challenge. We tell people to go off, get, jump in their car and, uh, and see how long they can keep their core, core activated for when they've got to look left, look right, put the, you know, the car into gear, look in the rear view mirror. You know, that once your brain starts to think of other things, it's actually not as easy as you think unless you've trained it um, to keep that core activated. Um, almost uh, by second nature without, without thinking. So next week, that will be our subject, looking at core, looking at how your core stability is so important in skiing and how we as coaches see so many mistakes can happen on the mountain just simply because someone wasn't activating their core, they couldn't take an impact or they couldn't activate something. And, and, and also safety, you know, just, just a, a generalization that you want to keep your spine in a, in a nice condition. Um, we hope the leg extension thing is of interest to you guys. As we said, we've just shown you some things to think about, to work on. Um, the TheraBand exercise is something really, you know, quite useful, we find. Um, we're practicing it left and right and just getting that feeling. Let us know if, you, if you're getting that difference between left and right. Um, I'm, we assure you, you probably will do. Uh, I will tune in next week, but like you say, it's not just about the Friday morning talks. Um, we're here all week and, and we're interacting all week. So, um we hope you guys have a good week um, and uh, yeah, you managed to, uh, to stay safe and uh, we'll, we'll tune in at 10 o'clock UK time next Friday to talk about the core. Thanks a lot guys, have a great week, stay safe.